A series of earthquakes has been shaking southern Italy with increasing intensity since 2022, threatening hundreds of thousands of people living above the volcanic area known as Campi Flegre, where the ground is experiencing slow vertical movement. While authorities debate disaster response and evacuation protocols, researchers may have found a way to thwart the cyclical disturbances altogether by managing water runoff or lowering the water table, thereby reducing fluid pressure in the geothermal reservoir. Through subsurface imaging and laboratory experiments, Stanford scientists have shown how increased pressure from water and steam in the reservoir beneath Campi Flegrei can cause earthquakes when the cap rock, or cap rock, is sealed. The research, published in Science Advances, suggests that recurrent reservoir overpressure was the cause of deformation and seismicity in the early 1980s and again over the past 15 years, ultimately leading to the identification of the underlying mechanism. These findings challenge the prevailing theory that tremors are driven by magma or its gases rising to shallower depths as melt from the deep melt zone moves upward into the upper subsurface beneath the volcanic area. The findings also reveal how the gradual rate of water recharge to the reservoir influences the rate of deformation and land elevation change. To address this issue, we can manage surface runoff and water flow or even reduce pressure by withdrawing fluids from wells, said study senior author Tiziana Venorio, an associate professor of Earth and Planetary Science at the Stanford Door School of Sustainability. The researchers analyzed recurring patterns and common characteristics in subsurface structural and earthquake imaging from two recent periods of unrest at Campi Flegre. Characterized by land uplift and eruption-like tremors, accompanied by rumbling sounds that have become familiar to locals, the scientists suspect this activity indicates steam-induced explosions, which are triggered when liquid water rapidly turns to steam during earthquake-induced fracturing. The study included data from the 1982 to 84 and 2011 to 2024 unrest periods. The last three years have been challenging. Many buildings have been damaged by the constant shaking and some people have been left homeless, said Venorio, who grew up in Puccioli and was forced to flee in the 1980s. This project has now become my goal as a citizen, not just as a geophysicist, because the research shows that unrest can be managed rather than simply monitored, paving the way for prevention. Campi Flegre is an eight-mile-wide caldera, a vast depression formed by massive eruptions between 39,000 and 15,000 years ago, which caused the collapse of the Earth's surface. The caldera experiences uplift and subsidence, with the land rising and falling even without eruptions. After the 1982 to 1984 eruption, the area sank by about 90 centimeters. For subsidence to occur, mass must be released from beneath the surface, which can include magma, water, steam, and carbon dioxide. The inhabitants of Pozzuoli have noticed the caldera breathing, emitting smoke and moving the ground, sometimes several meters up or down in a short period of time. Historically, uplift in volcanic regions has been widely accepted as related to magma recharge processes, assuming magma and or its gases are the primary drivers of deformation and subsequent earthquakes, but this may not always be the case, research finds. 
While some researchers have begun exploring the relationship between rainfall and seismicity in the past decade, this study clarifies that it is not rainfall itself, but rather the pressure generated by the slow but steady accumulation of water in a sealed reservoir that causes cracks and, consequently, shaking, Venorio said. We know that the annual variation in rainfall has increased over the last 24 years, so what needs to be monitored is the level of groundwater accumulation below the surface or ensuring direct channeling of water runoff," Venorio added. One of the distinctive features of Campi Flagre is the fibrous nature of the cap rock above the geothermal reservoir. Fibrous materials are used in engineering for structural reinforcement because they can deform without immediately fracturing. These materials can accumulate strain, which in volcanic systems can eventually be released through sudden eruptions of superheated water, steam, and volcanic ash. The researchers examined rainfall patterns over 24 years, the direction of subsurface water flow, and the sealing process of the cap rock to understand the recharge of the geothermal reservoir and its pressure buildup. At Venorio's Rock Physics and Geomaterials Laboratory, they demonstrated how cracks in the cap rock are sealed through the interaction of rock minerals with water and hydrothermal steam. To test the characteristics of the cap rock, the study authors conducted experiments using a hydrothermal vessel that functions like a device familiar to many Italians, a mocha pot or espresso maker. They filled the lower chamber with brine and the upper chamber with volcanic ash and rock fragments typical of Campi Flagre, then heated the vessel to the same temperature as the geothermal reservoir. Within a day, fibrous minerals formed and the cracks in the cap rock quickly closed through cementation. This created a closed system that allowed fluid pressure to increase until it ruptured the surrounding rock. Cracking caused by earthquakes caused a sudden drop in fluid pressure as the water turned to steam and evaporated. This produced the characteristic boom and rumbling sounds in the area. The researchers applied multiple disciplines to uncover how Campi Flagre operates as a closed system, including subsurface tomography, which Delandro conducted using earthquake records to construct subsurface images that could be analyzed like CT scans. Imaging the subsurface using geophysical methods is like an old-fashioned doorbell. It tells us that someone is knocking, but it doesn't say who it is. Therefore, the interpretation of tomographic images must be tested in the laboratory. That's what makes this collaboration between seismology and rock physics so powerful, Venorio said.